Hey everybody and welcome to prompt number eight. If you could leave your high expectations at the door, that would be fantastic. So let's get started. Robot, that is good for my lack of detail and not drawing technical things. So, well, it's not a challenge for nothing. Let's do it. Little Miss full of excuses over here. The art ended up turning out pretty good. I almost had a meltdown in the middle of it, but I think it turned out pretty good. So I had to start off the sketches by getting all of the basic, typical robot designs out of my system before I could move on to anything a little more creative. Once they were out of my system, I was able to be a little more creative with the robot designs. So of course, I wanted to make a lady robot because, hello, curves, they're more fun. But nothing was really sticking right off of the bat, and I just wasn't feeling it. I had a couple of ladies in mind, but I just wasn't feeling it. So then I thought back to the zombie prompt, where I told myself to think of what normally isn't a zombie. So I started to think, what is not normally a robot? And my initial thought was to just completely redo all the same animals I did for the zombie and turn them into robots. So it was kind of like a throwback to the zombie prompt. So I started off with a horse because, as I've said before, I just really like to draw horses. I don't know. And then I got to thinking, what if there was this little farmer mechanic girl who built horses and she had a farm of robotic horses? I guess this could be in the future or something. So I drew the standard robot horse and then I was like, does the horse run or does its legs tuck in and then it has this flame coming out of its butt and it propels itself. I mean, how cool would that be? So I drew her riding the horse as it floats and it looked really cool, but I've got this really bad habit where if I design a character, I want them to be in their like standard pose so you can kind of see the characters before you start seeing them in action, which is a really bad habit of mine because here I am with this regular pose for these characters instead of that cool butt fire action shot. I mean, ah. oh well, I'm not too upset. Maybe later I'll revisit it. So I decided to include just a small shot of me inking because I haven't been including that lately because I figure it's probably a little bit less exciting than painting. It's probably a little bit boring, but I figured why not? I'll do like a close-up shot and here is me inking. How exciting. I knew I was going to do one of those backgrounds where it was like a circle and it was kind of behind them. I was originally going to use the masking fluid, but I figured it's kind of a whole production in itself. I love the stuff, but I think it was easy enough to paint the background on parts because the characters kind of broke it up anyway. And when it comes to applying the masking fluid, it would have taken way more time to apply it and remove it than it would have been to just slowly paint the background around the characters, so that's what I did this time. I think I would have got a much, much more fluid gradient on the sky had I had done the masking fluid, but I think it turned out okay not using it and I saved myself a lot of time. So I don't really regret it, but it is very handy if I do want a more fluid gradient. With the sky, I was trying to do a complementary color situation. so. I was kind of planning ahead to where her hat would be yellow, so it would be around where the blue was, and then as the sky faded to orange, it would be where the robot was in her overalls and they would have blue colors to them. But the blue ended up being way brighter than I anticipated, and the robot ended up kind of blending in with it. And this is where my panic started. I really thought this illustration was the worst and I was starting to just regret everything I had done for the background and I just started to think what can I do to fix it? So my solution was to apply water to the blue areas and try to pick them up with a paper towel and kind of create a texture while also removing a lot of the brighter parts of the blue. 
So at this point I did accept that the sky looked the way it did and I moved on to the background. Do you recognize those cacti? Oh yeah, they're my cacti. Not only in watercolor form, but in sewing form, they're my babies. Love my cacti. I guess this would be set in the Midwest, you know, somewhere in the states where it's deserty, but also cowboy-y, you know, farms and such. I mean, it is a robot farm, so it doesn't need to be grassy, you know? You don't want it to be too rainy. You don't want your robot horses and cows to rust, duh. So I didn't record this part, but if you did notice, the sky changed just a little bit. I was still thinking about how it didn't quite look the way I wanted it to, so I put a yellow wash across the whole thing from top to bottom. This way, the blue wasn't as bright and the horse didn't quite blend in as much as it used to with the blue sky. And then it started to make me think that it was more like a twilighty type situation. So with the sunset, you could also start to see the stars in the sky, which I'll end up adding later. So luckily I was finally able to move on because I was finally liking the way the sky was looking. Plus, adding stars to the sky adds just a little bit more interest and it's not just a plain gradient up there, so it just ended up working all around. I was a little hesitant to make her hair red, not only because she looks like the Wendy's girl now and don't mention it, but because... Her hair is the only red aspect in the whole illustration, so I didn't want to throw in another color and have it kind of all over the place, but I think it works. I was also at the point of my illustration where I thought, yes, my style is sort of flat and angular, but it is too flat. However, once I started adding on the dirt and the schmutz and the oil and stuff, it really started to come together a lot more. The technique I used to apply the oil and the dirt is the exact same way I applied the blood to my zombies in my previous prompt. All I did was take a smaller brush and just kind of jab it at the paper at random. I would recommend using a lower quality brush or just one that you don't really like too much because it does kind of donk it up a little bit because I am jamming it into the paper. With each layer of the dirt, I just added more and more color to it, so that way it became darker, and it became this really textured and really good looking uh, detail to the illustration. It adds a lot, I think, to it. And of course, a nice little detail, I think, was putting a handprint on the horse because she loves it, she's petting it, she's dirty, but they're pals. So I think, despite my midway panic, I really came out with a successful prompt. Let me know in the comments below, if there are robot cows, what the heck do they use them for if they can't get meat or milk? Let me know, and I'll see you in the next prompt. Thanks for watching, bye!